Okay? And just so, just so we know, I'm going to put the bar in there, and now I'm going to push it down and bend the rod holder off of it. Okay. Y'all looking at the mount? Are y'all looking at the mount? Okay. All right, hey everybody. Alan, fish bite rod holders, mess around. Me and Brad mess around the shop today. Want to do a little video. One we done before, several years back. It was on our round rail mounts. Uh, we sell a lot of these. Um, and, and we want to show if these things are applied or installed correctly, best thing going, okay? Um, we uh, make these in seven eighths, one inch. Sea Arc has a special well they got. And then G3 has a special amount they got. But we can also do other sizes. You just have to mic them. Uh, we ask people to mic them if they don't know what size they got because seven mates looks real close to one inch. However, you tell us what you got, we'll make you, make you these mounts. But we want to demonstrate how you should install these mounts so that they don't slip. Um, so when you get these things, you'll get Allen wrenches uh, with them, two different sizes. And you take, put that thing on your rail and just barely snug it up so that you'll be able to move it. Because what we're going to do, we're going to put a rod holder in the, in the mount, and we're going to use, it's, uh, it's been a long time since we made these, but these, these probably, probably been six, six years maybe since we made these Raptors, two position rod holders. But uh, we dug in the bucket deep and found some. So we're going we're gonna to mess this one up. We're going to put the rod holder in it, whatever rod holder you use, put it in the rod holder, and we want to make sure that that post on your rod holder is straight up and down. All right, so if, if I like where I have it right there, sometimes you can put a rod in there and make sure it's where you want it. Because with this round mount, you can have any angle rod holder you want, okay? But we, we make our post straight up and down, and then we snug our, uh, our, our top screws, making sure that the gap's the same on each side or pretty close. And then what we want to do, when we got it snugged a little bit, we want to uh, tighten this set screw. Now this set screw is key. We, it's a pointed stainless steel set screw. We want to screw that in and just snug it up, okay? And what that does, it makes a little bump in the bottom of that rail, okay? We'll snug that up. Now what we want to do is we want to loosen the top a quarter and a quarter, okay? And you've seen it move just a little bit. That's because of that bump underneath there where I did it with the set screw. But I want to tighten this up again. Now what I want to do is loosen this up a quarter. Okay, and loosen this up a quarter. And then now what we want to do is we want to keep going back and forth until we see a gap forming at the bottom. You can see a little bit of it right there. I want about an eighth of an inch right there. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this with two hands. I'm going to go a quarter. Okay, and as I go loose, I'm going to keep tightening the bottom. Okay, hey, it might seem aggravating, but this is, this is the best, best mount out there if you do it right. Okay, quarter. Quarter, and you should see that gap growing on the bottom. I just can't get the Allen wrench in there. But, um. I want to keep tightening the bottom up. Loosen. Loosen. All right. Now, we're going to go a little bit more than that. Um, okay. One more time. And I think that'll be enough. Okay. A quarter. A quarter. Okay, I'm going to tighten that up. Now, the gap on the bottom. See that gap on the bottom? Now, what I'm going to do, I'll make sure my post is still straight. Now, I'm going to come back to the top, and I'm going to tighten this one, okay? Now, this is, okay, this is when you got this exactly where you want it because you're locking this thing down, and it's not going to move. The key is that set screw. Now, I'm just going to tell you, that set screw, we started putting that pointed set screw in the bottom, and, and then we see competition also has started putting a set screw in the bottom of their mounts, okay? And because it's a great idea, and it works. Now, 
We'll shine a little light in there and you'll see that set screw. It's coming up in the middle of that rail, okay? And, uh, and it, it, it'll come up in there and you won't, when you take this mount off, you won't be able to see that underneath there unless you lay down on the ground or the floor of the boat and look up in there. But, but um, it'll really lock that thing to it, okay? And I'm just going to keep, and I want to tighten this thing up the same way I loosened it. And it may seem like a little bit of trouble, but when you get that mount locked in there, it'll be, it'll be there to stay, and you won't have no slipping, which that's what we're getting ready to prove here in just a second. Now, by the way, this is a stainless steel tube that came off of, off of a big fiberglass boat. And uh, a lot of the boats have aluminum rails. And we got one of them too to show, but right now that's tight enough. And if you can see how that set screw came through or made an indention. All right, now here's the real test, okay? We're gonna lock that rod holder down. And in our bucket, Brad, if you zoom in here, we got these 30 pound steel uh, chunks of metal here. We're gonna take one of them and we're gonna set it up here in this rod holder with the strap right there against it, okay? Now that's 30 pounds, okay? If you know anything about leverage, okay, we got about three foot right here, okay? I can take this 30 pounds and slide out and something's gonna give, okay? To make sure it gives, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do it with this 30 pounds, okay? And what I'm gonna do, hold the, hold the bar there with the same handle like a rod holder. I'm gonna slide this out a little bit, okay? No movement, okay? I'm gonna slide that again. No movement. Now that's 30 pounds, that's 12 inches away. I'm gonna move out to about 18 inches, okay? That's 30 pounds, 18 inches, okay? I'm gonna move my box, okay? I'm gonna move on out here. And uh, that's about 20 to 24 inches, okay? And I'm gonna let go of that. Now, that's bound up right there. That's really bound up. I could put my other 30 pound weight in there, uh, but I ain't going to, okay? I'm just gonna hold that right there, okay? Uh, 21 inches. I think if I go any further, something's gonna go down right here, okay? I'm, I'm about 24 inches right there, and let's see what happens. Okay, now, it held that. And I don't know if anything's given on the inside, so now, all right, here we go. I'm gonna go back to zero, okay? Cause with saying that, I, I don't think it can hold the 60 pounds. Okay, that's 60 pounds right on the rod holder. So let's go out 60 inches, I mean six inches. All right, that's 60 pounds. Still ain't nothing gave yet, okay? I'm gonna go 60 pounds out to about 10 inches or 12 inches. Oh, that feels like something's getting ready to go. All right, it held that. All right, rod holder ain't bent. And by, and by the way, this is not stressing the rod holder. It's stressing the bolt. And as far as I know, all the competitors out there are, when I say competitors, fellas, I don't have no competition because I'm not competing with nobody. We just make rod holders. And we hope you like ours and we hope you use them. But I don't have no competition. I just, I like fishing, okay? But anyway, stainless steel, stainless steel. I'm sure there's different grades. Some of you guys might know different grades, but as far as I know, they all use a half inch bolt and they cut the heads. Well, everybody don't cut the heads off of them, but we do, okay? But anyway, it is that. 12 inches, 60, that's uh, 60 pounds at 12 inches away. I know it's gonna bend. Something's gonna bend or give right here. And I'm gonna hold my hand there and slowly let it off. And we're gonna see what happens. All right, unbelievable. Hey, some of y'all can't even pick this bucket up, okay? <laughs> but that's that's good right there. And and, and it's, it is bending. Something's bending on that rod holder. I got to move my table. I'm going to go out a little more. 
Okay. All right, here you go. It ain't going to make it this time. Something's going. The bucket. Anyway, the rod holder bent. The 60 pounds slid off the end. Okay. And just so, just so we know, I'm going to put the bar in there. And now I'm going to push it down and bend the rod holder off of it. Okay. Y'all looking at the mount? Are y'all looking at the mount? Okay. So now let's take the mount off and see what happened. Okay. Poor old Raptor. I don't think I got but one or two of them around. But we're going to take, we might have to take the mount off before we get it. I tell you, well, we're going to have to take this apart first, okay? Sorry about that, guys. Our, our gimbal, well, our cameraman said the gimbal was dying, the batteries in it, but I think he ran when the pipe flew out of there. But anyway, I can't get this thing off because I bent the rod holder so much. Uh, and instead of trying to straighten up, I want to show you, I, I want to see what is done inside this tubing, okay? Now, keep in mind, I got it welded to a piece of square so, so my vice can hold it. I'm taking it off, okay, and I want to see the damage it done to your to your rail. I don't care what it done to this one really, but I'll show you what it would done would have done to yours. Okay, take that mount off. That lets me unscrew my set screw just fine. Okay, now if you can see that, see how it looks right there, and the and the thing about it is. Hey, there's no way that could slip. That's that's a good that's a good indention right there. And you say damage? That's not damage. Wait till the ones you got now scratch it when you when it slips and turns, you'll see damage. But if that thing's mounted right, you got that hole underneath, and as far as you can see right there, there's no damage to all the way at the top, and you'd have to get underneath it to see. That's underneath your rail, by the way. You never see it. Now, you see what it done to the to the rod holder and put that mount right back on there. And you guys listen to this. You can take and move that thing right down just a little bit. Say if, say if something would have happened and you need to move it, if you don't get that set screw tight, that's the key right there is a set screw, okay? But you can take that thing and move it right down. Either way, move it right down where it's off of that set screw a little bit and, and you're going to be good. And, and from where you see it, it's going to look the same as it did, okay? Now, also, this one holds tight like you just seen it with 60 pounds. So now what we're going to do, we're going to cut the video. We're going to go outside, and instead of pulling that to show, to show you what that looks like to bend, to move that, which is, which is irrelevant now because it bent a rod holder, okay? Uh, but anyway, we was going to hook up to a rod, and pull up and try to pick that bucket up to show you what dead weight 60 pounds is, they ain't no, you, you ain't gonna pick it up, okay? Uh, with a rod and a reel and a string. I, I know I know, guys is picking up people with it, but but they're not fishing with that. I mean, I, I use 30 to 40 pound tests with 80 pound, 70 pound leaders, um, but we'll do a little video doing that, and you'll, you'll stay tuned, you'll see that. All right, guys, just before we go outside, uh, we wanted to do this. We just done that one in stainless. We won't do this in aluminum. We went ahead to save time. We mounted it in there. You can see the protrusion of the set screw underneath. That's key, guys. If the set screw's not up in there, and you can't tighten the set screw up on its own, you got to let the top screws pull it up through there. Okay. Anyway, check it out. For those who may, <laughs> whoever remember these, we hated them, but these they ain't the strongest rod holder around, buddy just the way it's made. 14 welds maybe on this thing. It's tough. The black diamond, okay? We're going to screw it in here. We went to our, we went to our bucket out back and pulled up some of these, but all we're going to do is just bend this off to see what kind of damage it does to the aluminum, okay? Now, that was stainless steel, the other one. This is your aluminum rail, guys. The, your G3s, your CRs has got the aluminum rails on it. Uh, it may be or may not be a thicker gauge, but this is the normal, okay, one inch, thin gauge. We got it welded to the tubing. We're going to see where this thing breaks or what happens or the rod holder bends or whatever. 
Uh, and by the way, this was zero and 40, all right? I, I loved the rod holder. I hated making it. But here we go. We're just going to ease down on it until something bends or breaks. So Brad can watch it now. And I don't know how much pressure that's taken. I know this, that the aluminum is given before the rod holder is bending. Okay. And so now that's far enough down. So now the mount, okay, did not, uh, it, it didn't move. It, it done some damage or something to the rail. Let's see what kind of damage it did to it, okay. And here again, everything, it's going to go off the, the weakest component. And if you mount the mount right and that thing pulls down that hard, that soft aluminum is going to go. And here again, if you mount the things with a set screw sticking out, it's got, it cannot, it cannot slip, okay? So let's um, get that back out of there. Oh, there we go. Something seized up and stuck there. Okay, on the aluminum rail. See what it done? It twisted. Twisted there. The top scarred up because it, it had to turn. But I'm telling you, let's go see. Let's go see how much 60 pounds of lifting twisted. on a rod looks like. It completely twisted the rail. You know what I'm saying? It, it scarred the rail up. And it moved, but boys, I'm telling you, that would have been a hoss of a fish. Let's go see what it does to the rod. Stay tuned. Okay, hey, we moved out here. I'm um, going to do this thing. Last time we done it inside. I'm going to do it this time with a with a medium heavy Mad Cat rods. Last time y'all seen this video, some of you on Facebook, I used Caleb Big Cat Fever rod. These are both great rods. I've had these for four or five years. I've had these for about a year now. Okay. But, uh, but this time I'm going to do it with the Mad Cat rods. And you check these, both of these guys out. They make great rods. They got great customer service. They take care of their customers. But anyway, we're going to use this Mad Cat rod, medium heavy. I got 30-pound slime line or 30-pound suffix. I don't know which one I got on this particular reel. But um, I'm going to take this. I got a 60-pound 60 60 leader with, a, with a, about a 9 alt hook. And only, I took 30 pounds out of the bucket. And we're going to see what, what this looks like on a rod. Uh, it's a it's a cheesy. It's a, not a cheesy. It's a good rod. Cast King rod, real here. I got several of them, trying them out and stuff. But I'm gonna see if it can pick up this 30 pound bucket. Okay, my drag slipping right there, Brad. Let me tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, my drag, I can't get my drag on this particular reel tight enough. Well, that's a little bit tighter there. Okay. Let's try that. The hook got me. Okay. Now I'm telling you, you guys get that kind of rope, that pull down, that's a good mount. It's a good rod. It's a good line, good knots. Hey, let them pull. We're going to see what Big Cat Fever is going to do. Now, this has got a different setup. Same line, same test, just a little bit longer. Gamagatsu hook. I'm going to hook it in the bucket. That's 30 pounds. Longer leader. This is a Shimano reel. Let's see what it does. It can't pick the bucket up, but y'all seen. Let them pull. <laughs> 